And now I'm so pleased to yield uh, to my good friend from, uh, from South Carolina, a gentleman who understands the threats to our hemisphere. Why? Because he is the chairman of the Subcommittee on Western Hemisphere, my good friend, Mr. Duncan of South Carolina. Five minutes. Well, I'll thank the gentlelady from Florida for her leadership on this issue, not just today, but uh, for her whole tenure in Congress. As the new chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, Subcommittee on the Western Hemisphere, I was grateful to see the return of Alan Gross to the United States last month after five years of unjust imprisonment in Cuba. The announcement over this past weekend even that the Cubans freed 53 prisoners was also welcome news. Nevertheless, I have major concerns with the way this administration, the Obama administration, conducted negotiations and the way the decision was made to radically alter long-standing U.S. policy toward Cuba. The administration failed to consult Congress, failed to consult any Cuban dissidents or civil society in its decision to embark on its new course in Cuba. The administration says its decision will empower the Cuban people, yet softening U.S. policy without concrete Cuban reforms will only boost the Castro regime and government and facilitate the survival of the communist regime. We need to focus not on what's best for the Cuban government, the Castro regime. We need to focus what's best for the Cuban people. So I ask you this. Will this deal mean more self-governance for the Cuban people? Will it mean more economic freedom for those who strive to innovate, those that are entrepreneurial within the Cuban society? Will they be able to start more businesses and have economic freedom? Will there be more religious freedom for the Cuban people? Will there be more rights to free speech? Are the Cuban people seeing this debate tonight on Cuban TV? Are the Cuban people able to access the Internet and watch what we're doing via YouTube or any other media? These are rhetorical questions, but I answer them with no, based on my understanding. Recall it was only one week after the announcement of this U.S.-Cuba deal that the Cuban government cracked down on peaceful protesters in Havana's Revolutionary Square. I point to that as evidence that it's still a closed communistic society. In conclusion, the administration decision is a reward to the communist dictatorship at the expense of the Cuban people. This action is especially disgraceful when we consider the administration's disrespect toward our friend and ally in Canada by vowing to veto legislation approving the construction of Keystone Pipeline. These are issues that require vigorous congressional oversight. I look forward to working with the ranking member, Mr. Sirius, as you just heard from as we hold hearings in the Subcommittee on Western Hemisphere in the coming weeks and months. And with that, I yield back. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Duncan. And we're so pleased that we have this dynamic duo of the chairman and the ranking member of Western Hemisphere. You're so right to point out, Mr. Duncan, that there is no freedom of the press in Cuba. That's one of the many freedoms uh, that the Cuban people are denied.